Okay, case study eight, Lorraine. So this is case scenario eight, Lorraine. Today, Lorraine was driving a three axle truck. So maximum weight for three axles? 26 tons. 26 tons. Maximum height? 4.65 meters. Maximum width? 2.55 meters. And maximum overhang? 300 mil. 300 millimeters, which is 150 mil on each side. This one was fitted with a freezer full of containers of potato scone dough, and it was going from Dublin to Barcelona. She looked forward to this journey because she had just finished two weeks holiday at home. Well, we're all at home at the moment. Lorraine knew this was an international journey. So is the Shia owner operator? Didn't say they need an international operator's license for that. Lorraine knew this was an international journey. So she brought her previous tachograph charts for the days she had worked. But you'd need them anyway, international or not, would you? Yeah. And how many do you need? 28 day plus one you're on. Yes. She was also given a letter of attestation. A letter of attestation is? Your employer to prove that you're uh, eligible to work. Exactly. It's a letter well, saying that country. you are allowed to work within Europe, the European Union and you get that from your employer in case you're stopped in another country where you're not allowed to work, but it proves that your base is Ireland. So you are allowed to work by her employer. She had all the vehicle documentation. What would that be? No, 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 um, insurance, CV, RT, CVT, yep. licenses. Yeah, the vehicle, license. not her. It says yeah. vehicle documentation. So that's your insurance, your tax, your CVRT, your true copy of operator's license, including the correct operator's license that she had got four years ago. Okay, operator's licenses last how long? Five years. And the European Five Insurance years. Accident Report form. I have no idea what that is. A European Insurance Accident Report form. It's at some reference to the bail bond. Okay. A bail bond is for what? Uh, Spain. Yeah, well, Spain in particular, but any country. And what does it do? It allows you to actually leave the country and come back for your court yes, Exactly. So you get released, the guard release you. While she was on holiday, a truck was serviced, so she did not check a vehicle before using it. Is that okay? No. No, it's not okay. Since the mechanic should have checked it. She did check the freezer, though, because she had been caught before with a faulty freezer and all the frozen goods had to be thrown away. Okay, you want to check the freeze, especially if you're going on the fail, you want to make sure it's connected up correctly. Because if you've got a truckload of bad food, number one, that's an expense. Number two, you've let down the customer, so you might suffer if they don't uh, use you again. And you're going to have to pay them back any expenses. And also, you're going to have to get rid of all that rotten food. So it's just a mess and it's an uh, expense. Lorraine's customers sort your scones, a well-known distributor of frozen potato scone dough to local markets. Her journey was taking her to Bices, a small bakery in Barcelona. The loading bay staff took special precautions while loading Lorraine's truck. All right. The potato dough was in containers stacked on wooden pallets and wrapped in sheeting. Is that okay? Yeah. It's straight wrapped on a pallet. Sounds okay. Then they strapped the containers to the pallets and secured the pallets to the truck. The loaders parked the truck in the yard and joined it to an electrical connection to keep the freezer at the correct temperature. Is that okay, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Seems okay. After collecting the truck for the yard, Lorraine drove to Dublin Port, boarded the ferry, and used a driver bunk and meal voucher. What happens if you get to the ferry in your dual break? Right on. Uh, You've got half, half an hour on and half an hour off. Yeah, you have an hour to get on and off the ferry, so you can interrupt your break to drive onto the ferry, switch your tachograph to ferry mode. The ferry arrived in Hollyhead. Lorraine knew she had no time to waste in getting to Dover to catch another ferry to Calais. Her truck was one of the first off the ferry. She drove through the customs without delay and onto a clear road. Her journey to Dover began at 10.30 and took her along the A5 leading to the M6. She had heard from other drivers on the ferry that there were roadworks. Okay, so that would come into your route planning. Hopefully our transport manager has already uh, worked that out for you. And taking into consideration the vehicle, the load, the weather conditions, toll bridges, ferries, weather, congestion, tunnels, bridges, and everything else that goes into route planning. While traveling, through, <laughs> while traveling through the Contraflow roadworks on the M6, a traffic patrol car pulled Lorraine over and a police officer asked if she was aware that her rear light cluster was not working correctly. What's the cluster? 
Great great, isn't it? What is a cluster? Of oh, bottles. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so when you get a group of lights together, your brake light is going to reverse the light and your indicator, you call that group of lights a cluster. And sometimes when you get a short, your brake light will be flashing instead of the indicator or whatever. And uh, uh, Brenda, being a, sorry, Lorraine, being a silly billy, did not do her legally obligated walk around. Mm -hmm. So she did not know that that light was not working correctly. How often do you need to do a walk around? Every morning. Every day. Every morning. You don't have to do more than one in a 24 hour period, but you must do it every morning. Yeah. And she didn't. That's an obvious breach. And now she's yeah. been pulled up for it. When indicating her brake light flashed, and when she used her foot brake, uh, one indicator <clears throat> and her fog light lit up. The police officer also noticed that the fuel filler cap was missing. Okay. That's ridiculous. And the vehicle plate was not attached to the vehicle. <laughs> Okay, that's highly illegal as well. So that's just silly, isn't it? Mm. Rather, the plate had been stored loosely in the passenger door pocket. So the police officer gave a vehicle probation notice to Lorraine. Probation means you can't do something. Oh, sorry, uh, probation means you, uh, you need to get something fixed. Normally, that would mean you can't drive the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, the officer allowed her to drive away in the truck. It's a probation rather than a prohibition. I don't know if that's a typo. We'll have to check the proper. I think it's a prohibition notice, not a probation notice. Fortunately, the officer allowed her to drive away in the truck because she was running late for Dover. Yeah, because police are often like that. You're running late, off you go, son. Mm. <laughs> However, she would not drive over the speed limit as there were several enforcement cameras. Not because it's against the law and dangerous and reckless, but because there were several cameras on the M25 which are goods vehicle speed limits of 60 miles per hour or 96 uh, kilometers an hour. She's in the UK, remember, not in the Republic. <laughs> After driving for 10 minutes, a bird dropped down in front of Lorraine's truck. She braked and swerved to avoid hitting it. She oh, has wow. braked and swerved a rigid truck to avoid a bird. No good. No yeah, good, Amma. No that was exactly the thought that was in my head. That was me. <laughs> oh, who was that? Gary. Oh, sorry, Gary, I thought it was a man. Yeah. Yes, swerving, swerving a 12-meter truck at 96 <laughs> kilometers an hour to avoid hitting vermin with wings, in my opinion, is not a great idea. Anyone else got an opinion on that? Yes, Gary, yes. you love all yeah. animals. What do you think? Go through them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you honest, sir, it's harder than you, you think. Well, it is for me now. I'd probably touch the brake, but I would certainly not jam on, not for a bird, mm. no. You jam on for a small child, obviously. Uh, you, you try to avoid uh, a dog or a cat. And I would, I, I'd hit the brakes, but there's no way I'd swerve around a cat or a dog either. Not in a, not in a, tw a 12 meter truck. Anyway, mm -hmm. the truck almost tipped over, but Lorraine's quick thinking and driving experience kept the truck on all its tires. Okay, now that's an oxymoron, isn't it? Uh-huh. But almost tipped over, and then it says she's quick thinking and experienced. She almost tipped the truck to avoid a bird. Once back on the roadway, she noticed that the truck was slightly slanted to the right when she pulled over. So what does that mean? Load shifted. Flat wheel. Load shifted or? Flat wheel. Flat wheel or? Could be suspension either, couldn't it? Yeah. It's not good, whatever it is. She discovered that the right front tire was flat. She phoned her depot, who got a company to replace the tyre, and with the help of a professional tyre fitter, she got back onto the roadway again. So that bird just cost 250 quid uh, in around that to replace the tyre, and I won't see called out, uh, and she's been delayed, and yes, not good. Lorraine finally arrived in Dover at 7.15. What time did she leave, did it say? 10 something. 10.30 a.m. So she's been driving <laughs> for nine and a half hours. If we drive nine hours after driving the 610 kilometers from Hollyhead. <laughs> okay, I just hope she took a break there. Obviously, you have your four and a half hours driving and your 45 minute break, and you could drive four and a half. You all know you're taking off at this stage. And caught a ferry to Calais. Once in France, she drove on to Troyes. Am I pronouncing that right? Troyes. A journey lasting almost four hours. Following her minimum rest period, so that's 11 hour, uh, nine hours. She drove 1,000 kilometers to Barcelona without stopping. No way. 
<laughs> all right even if she was on a motorway doing 90 kilometers an hour the whole time that would still take a uh, 10 hours 11 hours wouldn't that yeah. solid driving so that's just highly highly legal when she arrived at the bakery she parked the truck and went to her hotel for a well-deserved daily rest period <laughs> yeah well deserved hmm. the next day at the bakery it took eight hours to unload the truck what i would sack every person in that warehouse it took eight hours to unload a truck. Mm. I've seen an entire truck unloaded in about a minute and a half. It's about four forklifts. It was a distribution center. The truck pulls in. It was a rigid curtain side. The curtains went up and just like two forklifts each side just come bang, 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 bang. I said it was unloaded in minutes. It's certainly, I can't think of a scenario where it would take eight hours to unload a truck. Unless it was waiting seven hours and 45 minutes and then got in and they unloaded it in 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, it says there was, there was no forklift. Even so, no, I can't imagine a scenario where it takes eight hours. On the return journey, Lorraine was feeling tired and took a short nap after 800K. Everyone happy with that? Oh. No. No. Oh. Again, it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> She caught the ferry to Dover, and during the crossing, she realized she had broken the tachograph rules. <laughs> she took an old chart and changed the date to suit this journey. Ooh. Is it I like cool? her. Oh. Like her. <laughs> what, is it, what is it when you change your tachograph <laughs> chart? What do you get prosecuted for? Oh. Camping. Altering. Altering with an intent to deceive. Yes. Well done, Mary. Eventually, she got off the ferry and drove down a long, steep hill to join the motorway for Hollyhead. She had a three-hour delay at Hollyhead before the ferry left for Dublin. Once on board the Dublin ferry, she replaced the real tachograph disc with the false one. Everyone's happy with that, yeah? Illegal. Yeah. She'll be going, oh, yeah. boo. Yeah. <laughs> real tachograph with the false one. Again, altering with intent to deceive. After leaving Dublin Port, she met a multi-agency roadside check. An RSA transport officer checked her tachograph chart and noticed it had been changed. It was a very stressful day for Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would agree. That would be a very stressful situation. One brought on by herself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was case study eight. Uh, truck scenario, case scenario eight, Lorraine. 